Now, in question two, I'm going to explain why repulsion between two charged bodies is the only sure test of the sign that is carried by a certain body. Is the only sure test that the body is charged. Let's use a question to study that. In question two, we are told, state the reason why an increase in divergence is the only sure way of determining whether an object is negatively charged using a negatively charged electroscope. So, and this is the situation that we have. So, first of all, let me explain about a neutral electroscope because this is a neutral electroscope. A neutral body is one where the number of negatively charged particles which are electrons is equal to the number of positively charged particles which are protons. So remember that even if we don't show the charges on a neutral body, it does not mean that it doesn't have charged particles. Charged particles are there, but the body is not charged. By a body being charged, we mean that one of those is in excess of the other. For example, a negatively charged body will have more electrons than protons. And we only show the excess electrons. A positively charged body, on the other hand, will have more protons than electrons. And in that case, we are going to show the excess protons. So this is a neutral electroscope. Remember, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons and we don't show it on the body. We only show it if the body has excess of either of those two charges. So a negatively charged electroscope means that it's got excess electrons. And that is why we show these excess electrons on the body. They are uniformly distributed in the whole body. So when they go down where we've got the rod and the leaf, the leaf will be forced to diverge because there is a repulsion between like charges. That is the reason why the leaf diverges. Now this electroscope can be charged by induction. So I'm just picking an electroscope that has already been charged and it carries a negative charge. Now let's see when we bring a, a negatively charged body close to the cup. So over here we have another object maybe a plastic rod that has been charged by being rubbed with woolen cloth we know that when you take a plastic uh, rod and rub it with a woolen material it's going to acquire a negative charge so again i'm not concerned with how that body got charged all i know is that it is negatively charged when that negatively charged body is brought close to the cup of a negatively charged electroscope, what do you think is going to happen? There will be repulsion between the negative charge on the body and the negative charge on the electroscope. So that repulsion will cause some of the electrons to move down where we've got the leaf. There will be more concentration of negative charges on the leaf and on this part of the rod. That will create more repulsion. There was already repulsion here. Now that repulsion is going to increase and therefore there will be more divergence. Why are we saying that this is the only sure test that the charge on the body is negative because that is what the question is asking us to explain. State the reason why an increase in the divergence is the only sure way of determining whether an object is negatively charged using a negatively charged electroscope. Let's look at the next slide and see what happens when we bring a positively charged body 
close to a negatively charged electroscope and we also bring another body which is neutral. Let's see what happens. So this is what happens. This is a neutral body. You know, for the sake of understanding it, the interaction between the charges here and the charges here, I have shown the charges on the neutral body. Remember, a neutral body is one where the number of negatively charged particles, which are electrons, is equal to the number of positively charged particles, which are protons. And you can see they are the same. For every proton, there is an electron. For every proton, there is an electron. So this is a neutral body. We bring it from wherever it was close to the cap of a negatively charged electroscope. A negatively charged electroscope. Now this is what is, is going to happen. The negative charge on the electroscope is going to induce a positive charge on this side of the neutral body. What does that mean? It means that this negative charge on the electroscope is going to repel the electrons which are on the neutral body on this side so that they move all the way to the other side. And I'm assuming that this negatively charged body is a conductor so that electrons can move, is a conductor of charge so that electrons can move. It's a material such as maybe copper, but it is charged. So once that repulsion happens, that those electrons are going to move all the way to the farthest end of the neutral body, leaving the protons unpaired. Those unpaired protons are going to attract these electrons on the electroscope even more. So more of them are going to shift upwards. And when more of these electrons, which were evenly distributed, by the way, I left these negatively charged electroscope here so that you can be able to compare. So most of these electrons are going to shift upwards and concentrate here. If you look at the concentration of the electrons here, is less compared to the concentration of electrons here. Where have they come from? They've come from below here. So when they move, there will be less repulsion between the rod and the leaf, and the leaf collapses. But there is another object which produces the same effect. And this is where now we bring a positively charged body close to the cap of a negatively charged electroscope that positive charge will have the same effect as the effect that we saw here. There will be attraction between the positive charge and before I go to that, let me explain that when this negative charge on the electroscope forced the electrons on the neutral body to move to the farthest end, leaving the positive, this side positively charged, that is what we mean by the negative charge on the electroscope inducing a positive charge on this side of the neutral body. To induce is to, is to bring into existence that positive charge here. So a negative charge will induce a positive charge in that body. If, the, if here we had a positive charge, then it will induce a negative charge. So, let's, let's go on. There will be attraction between the negative charge on the posit between the positive charge on the positively charged body and the negative charge on the electroscope. So again, more electrons are going to move up because they are being attracted by this positive charge. What will happen to the concentration of the negative charge on the leaf and the rod down there? it will reduce. Again, there will be, the leaf will collapse. So at this point, if we were trying to identify the type of charge on the body that we've just brought close here, we will not be able to do that. Because whether the body is neutral or positively charged, it has the same effect. So here we cannot be able to tell the charge on this body. And the question is very clear. 
why an increase in divergence is the only sure way of determining whether an object is negatively charged. So the only sure way we can be able to determine that the object is negatively charged, let me go back to the previous slide, is divergence. Because it's, it, it only has one observation. When you bring a negatively charged body close to a negatively charged electroscope, we are going to have an increase in divergence, which shows repulsion between the two like charges. And um, that is the explanation you can give to this. So you can put it in words that there will be repulsion between the negative charge on the body and the negative charge on the electroscope leading to electrons electrons moving down the electroscope where they are going to cause an increase or the concentration of the negative charge and this one will cause more forces of repulsion between the leaf and the rod hence divergence you do not need to explain about what happens when a neutral body is brought close or a positively charged body is brought close? What you have just said previously will be enough answer for that question. So go through the other concepts as far as charging the electroscope either positively or negatively by induction is concerned. Otherwise, we move to the next question, which is question three.